Good evening and welcome to this TV3 News special on the release of Larry Murphy. Shortly after 10 o'clock this morning, Murphy was set free following a 10-year sentence. The convicted rapist sped from Arbor Hill Prison in a waiting taxi, pursued by journalists and photographers. He stopped at Kulak Garda station before departing again and what gave the media the slip at the top of Grafton Street at around lunchtime. Well, this evening we're joined in studio by Thomas Murphy, brother of Larry, and by journalist Carl McMahon of Star Sunday. And shortly we'll go live to Bolton Glass from where we'll be joined by our reporter Diane Connor for reaction to Larry Murphy's release from jail. But first, let us remind ourselves exactly why Murphy spent the last 10 years behind bars. Michael Ryan has this report. Shortly after 10 o'clock this morning, Larry Murphy walked free from Dublin's Arbor Hill prison and into a waiting taxi. He'd served just over 10 years of a 15-year sentence and wasn't hanging about to talk to the media camped outside. The story of the 45-year-old father of two from Bolton Glass in County Wicklow has been dominating the headlines for weeks now. Ten years ago last February, he brutally kidnapped and raped a 28-year-old Carlo businesswoman in the Wicklow Mountains before trying to suffocate her. He was only caught when two men out hunting came across the scene. Murphy is also prime suspect in the disappearance of three women who went missing in the Leinster area in the 1990s. Annie McCarrick, Jojo Dullard and Deirdre Jacob. Earlier this year, Midweek paid a visit, along with Sunday World journalist Neve O'Connor, to the spot where Murphy carried out the brutal rape. So as you can see how remote it is. It's eerie even standing here now in the middle of the afternoon, but what must it have been like on that night, do you think? Well, you can imagine the terror, the fear. The girl thought she was going to die. She was uh, subjected to one of the most horrific assaults that um, has ever come before the course. And his house is directly as the crow flies as through the trees we can see in front of us. How far over that way? About two and a half miles. It's directly that way. He quickly became prime suspect because this area is absolutely on the border of where um, Ireland's missing women, three of Ireland's missing women vanished. So um, he quickly became prime suspect in those cases. And he remains prime suspect in three of those cases? Absolutely, yeah. He was uh, jailed prior to the sex offenders law coming into place so um, he won't be subject to the same rigours, uh, although there is a clause in the law which allows for limited retrospection. The, the guards have said that they'll put a 16-man sort of a squad on, sur on, a, on surveillance on him. So. Will that happen, do you think? Well, you know the state of our resources. The victim herself wrote to the minister appealing for him to reconsider. Larry Murphy's planning to come back to the same area and um, where he struck and strikes fear into the heart of women. Um, but the minister said that his hands are tied, that there's nothing he can do, that Larry Murphy is entitled to 25% good behaviour, which begs the question, what constitutes good behaviour? He's shown no, no remorse for what he's done. And um, like our system has become so weighted in favour of um, the, the accused and prisoners that the, the victim's uh, rights are just falling between, somewhere between justice and the law. Concerned locals in the Baldwin Glass area are now meeting at 8 o'clock tonight to decide how to deal with the situation if Murphy returns to the area. Michael Ryan reporting there. Um, Cahill McMahon, uppermost, I suppose, on everybody's mind tonight is, number one, where is Murphy? Number two, what have the Gardaí put in place in terms of some form of mechanism to ensure that he is, he's monitored and monitored around the clock? Now, you've covered this story extensively down through the years. Are you any of the wiser tonight? Yeah, and you're right. We've been uh, covering the story for a number of weeks and, and months. And this week we have a special supplement in Star Sunday, which goes into the, the details and the background of the whole case. Now, our understanding is that Murphy is, uh, is now back in the streets today, and as we've all seen from the footage, um, as, it's, as it's known, he, he travelled from Arrowhead Prison to Kulak Garda Station, and then he was last spotted in Dublin City Centre. Now, our sources are telling us that tonight he's back in Garda custody, but of his own, um, of his own volition. He... Um, he he is now intending to leave the country. That's the, the best information we have to date. However, this is all subject to change. We understand that he made two attempts to travel to the airport today, to Dublin Airport today, but um, on both occasions he, uh, he asked for a taxi to be turned around and returned towards the city centre. So what mechanism then is put in place in relation to mm -hmm. information 
going. He, he clearly has to tell the Gardaí where he's going, and that information has to be then communicated to the jurisdiction in which he's going. Absolutely, yes. Under, under Sex Offenders Register, he is required to give his address within seven days of his release. Uh, we're, we're unsure as to whether he, he registered with this today. He still has, I suppose, six days left to do this. Um, if he does leave the jurisdiction, he will be required to tell the Gardaí, and he will also be required to tell the, the police force in whatever country he goes to. So if he goes to England, he'll be able to tell the local police okay. station where he's going. Tom, when did you last speak to your brother? Zero five was the last time I spoke to Larry. You had no communication with him recently on his pending release? He didn't try to contact you? Are no. you aware of what his plans are? No. I know nothing about him. You last spoke to him, as you said, back then. For what purpose or what reason? It was after me father's passing. I went to speak to him at that stage. And it was just about me father's passing we spoke. What did he say to you? Not a lot. He just inquired about what was going on back down in Balting Glass. Um, he already knew that because he was getting the papers. He inquired about who maybe died in the area or something, that's all. But he never spoke about what he did himself. And if you asked him anything about it, you get no answers. I'm curious, as are probably a lot of people, to know what he was like growing up as a regular kid, as a boy. Did he get involved in the usual rough and tumble, or was there anything that perhaps suggested that there was something not quite right? He wasn't like other children. No, he was your normal chap boy or child growing up, he was. He was no different than any other. Played football, and he run and played the same as everybody else, and mixed in with other kids in the community. What sort of relationship did you have with him and your sisters? And, and what relationship did he have with his parents? Was it normal? Yes, a normal relationship with us all. There was nothing abnormal about it. What about reports? And there have been pretty consistent reports in the media suggesting that he was somewhat of a, of a loner who tended to stand back from the crowd. Is mm, there any truth in that? No, it wouldn't be true. He got involved in... If he went into a public place, there was someone there he was talking to, he came to a crowd and he'd talk away. Did he have girlfriends? He did, yeah. Plenty of them. And there was nothing to suggest that, you know, his relationship with, with his girlfriends may be fractious or maybe out of the ordinary? It was just no, normal? there was nothing there. It was just normal. Do you accept um, when he said to you, and it's been reported extensively, that he just flipped? No, I don't accept the answer. The answer is not, doesn't explain to me what Larry did. He never actually explained what he did that night. It was explained after he was convicted and sent to prison. I heard it on the five o'clock news, but no one actually told us, or he didn't tell us either what he actually did that night. You then had to, had to tell your parents because they weren't aware of the, the, the fact that he was going to be charged in relation to this appalling uh, crime. But what, your father has passed now, but what is your mother's relationship with him now? My mother would have went to visit him. She would have went to visit him, all right. But... What does she talk about or does she ever communicate that to you? She never commu communicated that to me, but... Larry, in my knowledge, won't be coming back to Bottom Glass. He's most definitely not coming to me. And there's three of my sisters that has come to me, to come to me today, to ask me to explain to the people of Bottom Glass and the neighbouring areas that Larry won't be coming to stay with them. Now, there's one sister that's living in Bottom Glass and the other two sisters are living in Kildare. And he is not going to them, nor they won't accept them. Did your mother ever ask, uh, ask him why he never participated in any form of treatment, whether it be psychiatric or, or whatever, in, in prison? Because we know he didn't avail of any help. My mother never said anything to me about it anyway. But you must have been curious. I presume you've had conversations with your mother about her visits to him and what was discussed. No, because I asked Larry and myself about different things in the prison. And 
the answer I got was I flipped. And I'd come home and I'd say to my partner, I asked him this question today, such, such a question today, and he just told me I flipped. I'm not happy with that answer. I'm going back again. And I'd go back again and I'd ask the same questions and I'd get the same answers. I flipped, I flipped, I flipped. What was it like sitting across the table from him knowing what he did? Um, being honest with you, you felt like a piece of dirt on the other side of the table sitting talking to him. You just felt really low. When you walked through the prison gate, the key turned in the gate, the slam, the key turned. And then you went through another one and the same thing again. And it just felt, I wasn't brought up this way. And I don't want to be here. Okay, um, in a few moments, I'm sure you're probably aware of the fact that a meeting is underway in Bolton Glass around about 8 o'clock this evening amongst concerned residents who are discussing the, the release of, of Murphy today. We'll be live in Bolton Glass right after the break. Don't go away. <laughs>